Okay, welcome, welcome all you beautiful people. It is so nice to see that you have tuned in for our online service. I hope that you had an awesome week and we are coming to the point where it's time to worship God. I want you to know that God has an open heaven over your life. If you want to experience him, just reach out to him and I can guarantee you that you will experience him right in your living room. So come on, let's rise to our feet and welcome the worship team. Good morning, Grace Church. Thank you for having us in your homes this morning. We want to bless the Lord. Our God is a wonder-working God. His love knows no end, and His mercy knows no bounds. And I've searched the world, but it couldn't fill me. Praise and treasures that fade are never enough. Then you came along and put me back together. And every desire was now satisfied here in your love.
Jesus 
think of you in the praises star love you so much Jesus love you so much oh love you Lord. love you so
we've tossed in the ocean Vapor in the wind Still you hear me when I'm calling Lord, you catch me when I'm falling And you told me who I am I am All right, now that was an awesome time of praise and worship. It is so good to be in the presence of God. Before we go into the Word this morning, let's go over the announcements really quickly. The first one is Kids Alive. Every Sunday at 12 p.m., you can sign in your kids into Zoom to have an interactive sessions with the teachers. That will be an awesome time, so make sure that you get the link. If you don't know it yet, get in touch with any of the teachers or Joanna. Next one is our Bible study at Tuesday night at 8 p.m. We are going over the book of Ephesians, so you are more than welcome to join us every Tuesday night at 8 o'clock. Every Saturday, we have our 316 Movement Youth Meetings on Zoom as well. So for all the young people or those who are young at heart, if you don't know how to join, get in touch with any of the youth leaders or with me, and we will send you the link so that you can be a part of our youth meetings every Saturday at 2 p.m. Next Sunday is the first Sunday of the month of June. So we will have communion. So what you need to do is prepare a little bit of bread and a drink so that we can celebrate communion in our online service next week. So please come prepared next Sunday morning. And thank you so much, guys, for your generous giving. It is so nice and encouraging to see how you sow into God's kingdom, how generously you guys all give, even in a time of uncertainty that we are in right now. So I believe and I trust that God will bless every cheerful giver in our midst. And thank you so much. Okay, now without any further ado, it's time to welcome the speaker for today. And I am so pleased to welcome this a young lady who has welcomed me into her family as if I were one of her own. Of course, I'm talking about the mother of this house of Grace Church, Pastor Lifan. Good morning, church. Praise the Lord. This is a beautiful Sunday and uh, we are at the end of the month. What a, what a time. What a time. Time has passed us by so very quickly. We want to praise God that He is with us. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm so glad, Lord, we can be here this morning. Let us just commit this time to the Lord in prayer. Thank you, Father. You are such a wonderful God to us, O oh Lord. Father, we thank you. We thank you for being present with us, O oh Lord. Lord, you are present with us, O oh God, in times of trouble. Lord, you said in your word, Lord, that you will always be with your people, never leaving us, nor forsaking us, O oh God. And so we thank you. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for this time, Lord, that we can gather to worship you, to praise you, Lord, to lift your name up, Hi, Lord, and to exalt you. We thank you for the word of the living God that we can partake, oh God, and that we can feed upon and that we can grow and can be strong, Lord, knowing that your power and your spirit dwells in your word and in us, oh God. So bless us this morning as we sit at your feet, Lord, in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. This morning, I want to speak to you from Psalm 62, verses 1 and 2. I'm reading from the passage translation. It says here, I stand silently to listen for the one I love, waiting as long as it takes for the Lord to rescue me. For God alone has become my Savior. He alone is my safe place. His wraparound presence always protects me for he is my champion defender there's no risk of failure with God so why would I let worry paralyze me even when troubles multiply around me 
Friends, isn't this our cry this morning? Isn't this the cry of our hearts? If we are going through worry and anxiety and fear this morning, I want you to know, like King David, his prayer is made unto God. In these circumstances of difficulties and troubles multiply around him, he looked to God in prayer. At this time of point of time when he's writing this psalm, David was actually being chased by his son Absalom and he was running for his life. He was facing betrayal and rebellion. Even his own counselor was against him, taking the side of his son. So here we see David going through desperate times in his life, overwhelmed by all these this difficulties and depression in his life. But what did he do? What did he do? He sought the Lord. He sought God. You know, friends, at this time, we need to seek God. We need to know that the Word of God can help us, like David, make a transition out of depression into his delight, knowing that God is our champion defender, that God takes our side and he will never, never, ever fail his children and his people. Hallelujah. So the word of God helps us this morning as we look at it to make the needed transitions in life that we need to do out of being victim to being victorious. Hallelujah. Our theme for the year is to be, to be victorious through the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Triumphant in the Holy Spirit. This morning, I want to share with you three words concerning making this transition. The first word I'm talking about is think. Think. Now, a few, few weeks ago, I was sharing on renewing the mind and how we need to renew our thoughts and how we need to think and see things differently from a different perspective, from a heavenly perspective. My dear friends, Philippians 4 verse 8 reminds us to keep your thoughts continually fixed on all that is authentic and real, honorable and admirable, beautiful and respectful, pure and holy, merciful and kind, and fasten your thoughts on every glorious work of God, praising Him always, always. This is taken from the passage translation. My dear friends, we need to think good thoughts. Once again, I cannot, I cannot just, you know, not talk about this. We need to think good thoughts every day in our lives. Thoughts about, thoughts about good things. Thought, thoughts about, that are noble. Thoughts that are pure. Thoughts that are holy. This is what God will of his children to do. And we, if we need to get out of our anxieties and our worries, my dear friends, this is what we ought to do. And you and I, we have the secret. The secret is through the word of God. And we have the power of the Holy Spirit to help us give praise to God and give glory to him. So think also, praiseworthy thoughts, thoughts that can give praise and glory to God. Think of what God has done for you throughout this whole year of, of uh, going through this pandemic. You know, we thought it would last only a few months, but lo and behold, it's more than a year now, moving on into our second year. And who knows, possibly the third and the fourth year. But dear friends, we need to hold on to praiseworthy thoughts that God is with us, that God is our champion defender, that He will hold us in His hands, granting us His peace and His well-being. He has good thoughts for you and me, you and I. So let us think excellent thoughts. You know, New King James Version of the same scripture, Philippians 4, 6 says, whatever is true, whatever is noble, what is right, what is pure, what is lovely, Whatever is admirable, think on these things. So friends, we may be disappointed like King David. We may be feeling despondent. We may be feeling, when will this pandemic end? We, will, we, we may even get betrayed by brothers and sisters, by friends, family members. You may be betrayed by your, your boss who promised you a promotion and you didn't get it. But, you know, friends, God is still in control. God is still in control and we need to think that God can give us the victory. Things that can go out of hand, beyond our control, can frustrate us, 
you know, can frustrate us. And this COVID-19 thing can cause depression to come. And this is exactly what the enemy would want you to do, to be depressed, to feel down and out and fallen. But friends, church this morning, let us arise. People of God, children of the living God, I want to encourage every one of us to arise out of this cloud of depression, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, looking to Jesus who promised to give us life and to give it to us more abundantly. So friends, change the way we think. Look to the word of God and behave according to what God's word tells us. Hallelujah. The second word I want to talk about this morning is to talk. The word talk. The worst punishment a person can get when he is in jail is to be placed in solitary confinement when he cannot speak to anybody. He's just locked in his four walls. And you know, dear friends, we are locked down. We are in a lockdown. You may, be, you may seem to think that you are locked down in your four walls. You have no one to talk to. But look, talk to God. Talk to the right person. That's what I'm saying. All right. We need to talk to the right person so that you can be lifted up in your spirit, man. Hallelujah. Philippians 4 verse 6 to verse 7 tells us, Don't be pulled in every direction or worried about a thing. Be saturated in prayer. Throughout each day, the Lord encouraged us to talk to Him throughout the day. Hallelujah. We have this open door above us here, friends. So why don't we use it? Why don't we use it? Offering your faith-filled requests before God with overflowing gratitude and tell Him every detail of your life. Oh, I just love this part. Tell God every detail of your life. So bring Bring to him all your anxieties and all your fears and all your worries. Talk to him about your concerns. During this lockdown, Lord, I'm not able to see my grandson. I'm not able to see my granddaughter. I only can Zoom and talk to them, Lord. It's not the same as talking face to face and I, I miss them terribly. I, I wish I can hold them and hug them, but I can't do it. I'm frustrated, Lord. Talk to him and God will comfort you. Through his word and through his Holy Spirit, his peace shall come upon you, my dear friends. You talk to him because his presence can be so real to you. To lift you up out of depression and despondency. Taking you out of rejection and failure and dwelling in his presence. Friends, don't dwell in your anxieties. Don't dwell in your, your negative thoughts, okay? Because... Anxieties, they are vague, they are irrational. Sometimes they bring so much of fear on you. Anxiety can cause you over a long period of time, health issues, you know, insomnia, inability to sleep, loss of appetite, and so on and so forth. We, we don't want to dwell on the negative, but I tell you, anxiety can make your life go downwards and can kill your relationships with the people who love you. They are there for you, around you, your home, your family. Anxiety can cause your relationship with your loved ones to go downhill. So friends, we are not going to dwell on that anxiety. We want to cast it all on Jesus, knowing that He cares for you and He can take care of all your needs and all your hearts cry. Hallelujah. Because Jesus Himself knows the 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 what worry can bring to us. He warns us in Matthew 6, 25. Jesus says, he says, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food and the body more important than clothes? Yeah, Jesus knows that you have worry and you worry and you need all these things. Again, I say in in, uh, in the New King James, I want to repeat Philippians 4, 6, 7. Again, Jesus says, again in Philippians, he says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, friends, in everything, by prayer, uh, supplication, thanksgiving. Make your request to God and the peace of God. Hallelujah. That's what we long for. The peace of God that transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Notice four words when you're talking to God. Four words. Prayer, supplication, thanksgiving, 
requests. Bring them all to God. Talk to God. Hallelujah. Talk to God. It's important. It's important. He knows what you need and He will provide all that you ever shall need. Hallelujah. Talk to Him. Talk to Him concerning the works of your hands. Talk to Him concerning you know, the unity of the church, the unity of the brethren. Talk to him about love. Talk to him about anything that concerns your heart. But don't talk to the wrong person. We are warned not to talk to the wrong person because when we talk to the wrong person, your, your anxiety and your doubts, your worries will not go away. Ezra 4.4 4 warns us, the people around them, Israelites, set out the people around the Israelites set out to discourage the people of Judah make them and make them afraid to go on building they were one day wanting to build the house of God but the people around them were were talking negative things were putting fear on them and worry on them so friends get rid get rid of your anxieties and talk to the right person talk to your spiritual leader talk to your pastor talk to your cell leader talk to people who know who cares for you and who sincerely gives you the right counsel and who seeks the mind of God for you and pray for you. Hallelujah. Friends, be careful. All right? Talk to Jesus. Talk to the right person. Secondly, when we talk about talking, talk about that person. Talk about the right person. Why do you waste time talking about so-and-so, this person and that person, this politician and that actor and that actress and preacher and so on and so forth. We, we don't want to talk about negative things, all right? Talk about the Lord. When you gather together, Proverbs 12, 25, anxious fear brings depression, but a life-giving word of encouragement can do wonders to restore joy to the heart. Don't we want that, my dear friends? We want to restore joy to the hearts of our dear friends and our families, uh, one another, even in our chat groups. Because right now, we can't gather together to meet in cells, but we can Zoom. We can talk to one another through the internet. Hallelujah. Thank God for media and able to do that. Right now, we cannot meet in church, but we can meet like this. When you, you go into online and listen to the Word of God, praise Him. We are able to give you words of encouragement. And you too can encourage one another through the Word of God and through the power of the Holy Spirit. So when you gather together, talk about what God has done for you. Share your testimonies. You know, share what God has done to lift you up. What did, the, what did the Lord speak to you when you do your personal devotion? When you meet with Him in the morning or throughout the day? Oh, no, what is God speaking to you? Share this with one another and be encouraged. Be an encourager. Hallelujah. To lift up one another. So give God glory. Talk about His love. Talk about His forgiveness. Talk about His salvation. Talk about His goodness. Talk about His healing power in your lives. Talk about His provision to you and to your household and family. Talk about His peace. Even in times of turmoil and anxiety, He's able to grant you His peace and you can have a good night's rest. Give Him glory. Hallelujah. So that's what we should talk about when we gather together. Praise His name. What a wonderful God we have. And He has given the, us this opportunity that we can talk to one another, the right person, talk to the right person to encourage each one. And I pray that even as you hear God's word this morning and it, as you listen to the message of the Lord, I pray that the Holy Spirit will bring this truth into your heart and your lives and you are able to stand upon the word of God and able to take victory for yourselves, able to cast out every fear and every anxiety in your life. The third word I want to speak about this morning is the word travel. Oh, our eyes light up when we hear the word travel because we want to travel. Oh God, when am I traveling? Lord, I can't wait. I can't wait to book my tickets. <laughs> when, when, uh, when, uh, MCO was lifted for a short while and the tickets to Langkawi were sold out within the first hour, I think. <laughs> and thousands of people just want to, want to get out of their, of their homes and to go out to travel. Friends, we are, we, are, we are not able to travel right now, but we shall be. We shall be in time to come. Hallelujah. Don't be hopeless. Be hopeful. Okay, be hopeful. But right now, 
why, right now, when we are not able to go out and to travel, I can't even go back to my home in Sepang. I can't cross districts right now. And you, you, you may have your, your children and your loved ones in other states and other countries, and we're not able to cross borders to see them right now. But friends, let us travel a little bit out of our homes, a little bit out into your garden. Go out, look up, see what God is doing. See what God has given you. The beauty of nature around you. Even when you when you hear the sound of rain, you know, let it lift up your spirit. When you see the blue sky and the beautiful things around you, thank God for a beautiful day. Thank Him for, for His creation. It's beautiful. Amen. So, don't travel out alone. Travel out with Jesus. Travel with Jesus. Go out. How did Jesus encourage His disciples? Huh? He shared His personal transition. This is what Jesus did. In Matthew 6, verse 26 to 30, Jesus is talking to His disciples. Look at the birds of the air. Look up. Look at the birds. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field, how they grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today, gone tomorrow, thrown in the fire. Will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore, do not worry. Again, I repeat. Therefore, Jesus says, do not worry. Saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? For all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things. Dear friends, Look around you. Take a trip out, outside your own house. Let Jesus walk with you and you see the wonders of nature around you. See your little plot of land, your little plot of plants, beautiful things. See the peace that God has given us in our nation. Even in these desperate times and during these times of pandemic, there is still peace. When you wake up in the morning, you thank Him for the peace that guards your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus for the peace that you can experience in our nation. Because we know there are wars and rumors of wars going on around us and there is no peace. But with Christ, we can have this peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Take the Lord with you. Take Him with you. God took Abraham out of his tent. Abraham too was frustrated in depression. When am I going to have a son? When do I have an heir? I have everything that I need. A rich man, a wife who loves him, but he has no son. God took him out, traveled out with him, stepped out of his tent. God says, look up. Look at the stars around you. Look up at the stars and the sand. Feel, feel the sand beneath your feet. You know what, friends? Travel out. Uh, there was a little window that we had when MCO was lifted up and Pastor and I went back to Sepang. We went back to our home. We did morning walks, evening evening walks. We went out to the beach. We walked. Pastor walked for a few kilometers. And I did some stretching on the sand. And just looking at the waves and the, and the vast skies. It's beautiful. And just thanking God for His creation. Thanking and experience His presence. And I was doing my a little a fun little stretching here and there. And I thought to myself, oh, I'm alone on the beach. Nobody is looking at me. So it's fine. You know, lo and behold, when I went back, when the, when the MCO was was on again and I went back and came back to see my family my daughter Joanna told me mom you went to the beach somebody saw you doing some some stretching some exercises and couldn't believe the eyes that Pastor Laifan can do exercise on the beach you know I was shocked I was shocked huh? I thought nobody would see me and then lo and behold somebody was watching guess what my dear friends God is watching over you. He watches over you day and night. He's there. He wants to travel with you. He wants to walk with you. Whether you are, you know, in your own home, in your room, in your garden, in your porch, in the park where you are allowed to go, you, you cycle along the roads. 
the Lord wants to be with you. Of course, we observe all SOPs, but the Lord is there with you. You are never, never alone. He is your champion defender. Hallelujah. He'll take away all your troubles and all your worries and all your anxieties and He will lift your heart up and grant you much peace and joy. Hallelujah. Believe me, my dear friends. So I encourage you this this morning with the word of the living God. Let us go to the Lord in prayer again. Let us just talk to Him and tell Him whatever is in your heart. And my dear friends, I promise you that the Holy Spirit will come. The Holy Spirit will lift you up and He will come and His wraparound presence will envelop you and you will feel His love, His peace and His joy once again within you. The joy that nobody, no one can ever take that away. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. What a great God we have. And even as we close our message this morning, we are going to bow down and we are going to worship our living God, lifting up our hands and giving praise to Him. What a glorious God we have. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and our griefs to bear. What a privilege it is to carry all everything to God in prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you once again. We thank you that you care for us so much that no man can ever care for. Lord, your love for us, Lord, is abundant, abounds within us. Your banner over us is love, O oh Lord, this morning. Father, we thank you that we can come out of our depression. We can come out of our worry and our anxieties. And we can cast it all at the feet of Jesus, knowing that you are there for us. And that your word encourages us. And your Holy Spirit lifts us up, O oh God. And brings us to a firm place. To a place of security. To a place of comfort, Lord to a place of peace. Thank you, Father. Thank you that you are so real in our lives, so real in the lives of your people in every home, in every family, Lord. We want to praise you and we thank you today. Continue, Lord, to be with your children. Continue to build your church, O oh God. The gates of hell will not prevail against it, O oh God. Lord, even despite this pandemic, Lord, despite this time that your, this difficult time that your people are going through, Lord, come, Lord. Come to the rescue of your people. Come, Lord, to lift them up and place their feet on a firm foundation. We thank you, dear God. We thank you, Father, for answering us and listening to our prayer. Thank you. In the name of Jesus, we ask and pray. Amen. Amen. And the Lord will bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have a great week. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. Cause His face to shine upon you. Be gracious unto you. Let His countenance be on you and grant you peace in all your homes. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Love you and have a great week ahead. God bless everyone. Bye. Now, thank you so much, Pastor Lifon, for this encouraging word. You know what, church? It's time that we change the way that we think and that we change the, day, the way that we talk. Now, that is a tall order, but that is our homework for this week. So have an awesome week. Make sure that you put into practice what we heard. Change the way that you think. Change the way that you talk. Then we can transition from depression into delight. Amen. Now that was an awesome word. I am excited to see how I can put that into practice this week. Okay, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Have an awesome week ahead. Remember, Kids Alive is on right after this. And then I will see you guys on Tuesday night for our Bible study. Until then, have an awesome week ahead. Stay blessed, stay safe, and we will see you. We love you. Bye-bye. <laughs>